Whoa, 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 whoa. My name is Dewey Jones. I'm a Colorado off-roader and I said I would not be making these videos until winter hit and winter has hit us. So this is a video that's going to show you some of our trails that we think are great for testing your rig. Um, now these are our opinions. I'll put in there. I'll explain why we think these are good trails to test your rig on. And this is just the beginning of a whole bunch of videos like this. So I hope you enjoy it. Any feedback will be great for us because uh, that'll help me make these even better in the future. But yeah, let's, uh, let's start and I'm gonna show you our trail. All right, let's get right into it. This is Cliffhanger 2.0, a trail used by TFL, a popular Colorado-based car review channel. We chose this trail because it will challenge your vehicle's traction. So we think it's a good trail to get a baseline on and then when you change things up like your tires or lockers, go back and see the difference. In this trail guide, Sean will run it with both a two inch and three inch lift. I'm really excited to show you this one in a few weeks. But he doesn't have momentum now. This is... It's hard. It's really hard. Yeah. I got up this though the first time, right? Yeah, you did. It took you a lot more effort than you think you remember that you had. The second trail on our list is Argentine Pass and the surrounding area high altitude trails. These two main trails can take you to above 13,000 feet for which some vehicles may have a challenge. We picked this due to the high altitude nature of the trail, but also because there are easy or harder paths that will get you to that 13,000 feet. This trail can also test your pucker factor, but maybe not as much as one later on this list. In the guide, we'll talk about off-camber passing as we've had a lot of rollover incidents this summer on Colorado trails. Also, I'm really excited about this one because we have some special appearances that make their debut in this video. Okay, I absolutely love this trail and just published a full trail guide on it. Mount Antero takes you to above 13,800 feet via tight switchbacks and steep climbs. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, definitely check it out as I think you'll love it. Now the reason it's included as an honorable mention and not included for altitude testing is because it is quite far from Denver. Our thoughts are... If you're doing altitude testing and you encounter issues, you don't want to encounter them so far from your home. And that is why this is just an honorable mention. This has been my go-to trail for years, but it's also the one that pushed me to start this YouTube channel with my stock Wrangler. You see, almost every time I would go play here, I'd have someone in a bigger, badder Wrangler question if I should actually even be on the trail. Now, I just wanted to show people what could be done with a stock Wrangler. However, let's talk about why it's on this list. 
We included it because it is one of the best trails to legally cross water and sometimes deep water. This might be the trail to test your new snorkel on. With that said, water crossings have the potential to cause costly damage as I'd want to make sure that your vehicle is ready for the task before taking it here. We'll talk more about this in the guide, but just wanted to add that word of caution right now. Besides the great water crossings on this trail, this trail will also help improve your driver skill. Now this is one I usually do a couple times a season, but one time I took a really dumb line and got high centered. I was also solo wheeling, which we all know is a big no-no. Luckily I was able to self recover, but it reminded me that I need to think about my lines and need to improve them at times. Anyway, I think you'll love this guide, and for those of you that like drone shots, I definitely worked on proving my shots, and I'm not the greatest at it because I try to also drive while, fl while flying, and it's just, it's tough, trust me. Well, thanks to Justin. Justin helped me get this... Uh... We have published a video on both bunts and the ironclads in the snow and T33 will be coming up as an official trail guide. Now these trails are all near each other and they get an honorable mention for terrain variety and the ability to work on your driver skill. Now the reason these trails weren't included in this official list is because the trails have been overwhelmed by rental side-by-sides. Nothing against them, but they can be a bit erratic. So I don't have much issue with pucker, but the first time I did this trail, it challenged my pucker factor like crazy. Now that's why we've included it on the list as this is a great trail close to Denver to challenge your pucker factor on. Now with that said, I still think this is one of the more dangerous trails in Colorado and if you decide to try it, definitely review Fun Treks, Trails Off Road, and my guide. There are a few rock slides on the cliff's edge that you must navigate and use extreme caution on. I will say they seem more stable now than they did the first time I did it. But, and this is still a big but, it's still a risky trail. Also, even though I determine it's safe to navigate in the trail guide, conditions on the trail can and will change. Sometimes to make it easier, sometimes to make it more difficult or dangerous. Next on our list is Wheeler Lake, an incredibly fun trail that we'll soon have a trail guide for. Now we chose this trail because we thought it was the best for pushing it. Basically that means this is a more challenging difficult trail but still relatively short at 3.2 miles. So you can take this on and see how you do before pursuing trails like Holy Cross or Lake Como Road. Now this upcoming video will cover the entire trail and it has some wild action on it including Sean on the V-notch. Does he have another door incident like he did in our snow wheeling video? You'll have to stay tuned to see, and that trail guide is going to be worth the wait. Trust me. They said go left and then right, right? Yeah, you have to go to the left of the border. 
This was a really popular trail guide, so I'm guessing most know how good Slaughterhouse is. So Slaughterhouses are best overall for a couple of reasons. First, it's close to Denver, so should you encounter any issues, it's easy to get your ride home or to your mechanic. Also, it's good for newer off-roaders because there are bypasses for all of the harder stuff. Additionally, it's a relatively safe trail as I don't see a lot of areas that could risk your personal safety. However, that first descent could cause problems if you approach it the wrong way. There you want to be in low range and in low gear, avoid right in the brakes. I think our trail guide does a pretty good job of showing you the entire trail, so check that out if you want to learn more about it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope at least I explained well enough why we chose the trails that we did. We'd love to hear what trails you guys think are great um, for testing your rig. Just let us know down in the comments. But if you are new here and want to see what our trail guides are like, click up there. That's a little playlist of our trail guides. Some are better than others. I'm getting better as I go. Um, if you want to see how we find trails, click uh, down here that's basically how i find trails to do trail guides on um i think it's a really good method it helps us find some good trails and if you are new here and you kind of like what you've seen click over here i'd love to have you as a subscriber i think these videos will be getting better and better as time goes on so yeah thanks um have a great day bye guys mm -hmm.